This is the story of Chalon Arang, the legendary evil Balinese witch. But did she really exist, or was she imaginary? The Javanese kingdom of Madang decided to bring the island of Bali under its control through its princess Mahendra Datta, marrying the young Balinese king Udayana. Their reign brought a period of relative peace and prosperity. Behind the scenes, though, it was Queen Mahendra Datta whose wisdom really guided public affairs. She drew upon Lipyakara, a palm leaf manuscript, Lontar, on how to govern fairly and justly. She needed it to keep the violent Balinese aristocrats in order. Then, suddenly, King Udayana died. Mahendra Datta reigns as queen. However, she's a woman, a Javanese, and worst of all, rules justly. So she has made bitter enemies of the corrupt courtiers, 
who are thinking how to get rid of her. Then, a volcano erupts. Famine and cholera strike. Two senior ministers, Pati Madri and Maling Maguna, decide that it is time to act and bring back the bad old ways. So they start rumours. Who is responsible for this dreadful calamity? We know the Queen prays secretly to the terrifying goddess Batari Durga. Perhaps it is she who has sent this plague and killed the king too. The falser the rumour, the faster it spreads. Vested interests fear and hate the Queen for introducing new ideas, for questioning tradition. When the two ministers feel confident enough, they advise the Queen to leave for your own safety. Mahendra Datta departs for the remote forest village of Dira with her daughter Ratna Mangali. No longer queen, she modestly calls herself Walu Nating Dira, the widow from Dira. Soon after her departure, however, nepotism, corruption and violence take hold in the kingdom once more and ordinary people suffer intolerably. Educating her own daughter, Walunath Indira explains two aspects of power. Brute force cannot defeat mind. Those with inner majesty, Wibawa, will triumph in the end. Also, beware tradition. It is used to coerce and to deny change, flux and creation. Men feel threatened by change and call it black magic.
Gradually, more and more people flee the ruthless regime and make their way to the forest to seek advice and help. Young women run away from their patriarchal families and become her disciples, Sisia. Recognizing Walunating Dira's growing reputation poses a threat. So Pati Madri travels secretly to the forest to confront and kill her. However, on arriving, he's surrounded by the Sisya, who have learned not to be afraid and make fun of him. They force him to flee.
ashamed at being outwitted, he returns to the court claiming Walu Indira transformed into the terrifying figure of Chalon Arang before his very eyes. In the court, panic reigns. What to do? How to turn things to our advantage? If masculine force won't work, perhaps guile will. Pati Madri goes in search of the wily old court councillor Mpu Barada. He devises a plan for his son, Kabo Bahula, to seduce Ratnamangali so he can steal her lonta, which they attribute with magical powers. Da, do I have to do this? Yes! Do your homework! But I did it yesterday. You didn't get it right. Okay. Come on, focus! <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Uh, that's better. <laughs> Come on, do your homework! Apu! 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 Over here! Ampu, Walu Natangira is destroying everything. I don't know what to do. Maybe, maybe you, you can help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about your problems. Hmm. Ha! I have an idea. You go back to your people. Leave it to me. I'll deal with it. Yeah. Thank you. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you, Ampu. Hey! Come back! But I really don't want to do this. No, no more writing. Put it away. We have a job to do. What is it? You go to Waluna Tengdira's place, seduce and marry her daughter. <gasps> is she pretty? <laughs> is she sexy? Hey! Focus! You need to steal her lunder. Bring it here. Give it to me. I saw. Yeah. Off you go. I did. Kneel. Yeah. That's better. When Kabo Bahula arrives with a plan to seduce Ratnamangali, she's disgusted by his arrogance and his aggressive overtures. She rejects his advances. Finally, Bahula tries a more modest approach. Knowing the gossip about her mother frightens off all the young men, Ratnamangali reflects and finally agrees reluctantly to accept him.
At night, while everyone is asleep, Gabo Bahula steals the Lontar manuscript to give to his father. On waking, discovering the Lontar missing, Walunathang Dira realizes that Ratnamangali and she have been tricked. After her initial shock and anger, she calls her Cecia to discuss how best to respond. She decides ultimately to ignore the attack because she realizes the men behind this are trying to goad her into a violent reaction. They seem to believe the power resides in objects like Lontars, not in the thoughts of the person who reads it. Gobo Bahula returns and tells his father a quite different story about how brave he was. He managed to capture the Lontar in the face of deathly danger. Every night, Walu Dira and her sisya Nalakas transformed into terrifying apparitions. So the legend of Chalon Arang was born. As Walunathingdira 
has not reacted to the theft, and Pubarada is puzzled. He has no idea what she's up to, and cannot report his success to the court. So, he is forced to go and find her. Discovering her calm, he tries to enrage her by waving the lontar at her. She simply hands it back to him. So Ampu Barada throws it in the fire. As she still refuses to be drawn, he attacks her. However, she deftly evades him until it dawns on him that the stories of her being a witch were false. Instead, she has such majesty that he is obliged to submit. Walu Natingdira transforms into a truly independent woman, and Ampu Barada learns the nature of inner power. Do not believe everything you are told.